I promised Sandra I'd make her some gates to go with her new gate posts. Now there must be thousands of different ways to make a gate. Too many to choose from. Here's one I made for our garden, but I still haven't hung. But much bigger versions of these sort wouldn't really work. They would be very heavy and also they would catch too much wind. We need something more like a pair of field gates. These are a few of the ideas I drew up for her based on the materials I had available, which was flat steel bar. In the end, we chose the simplest traditional shape and left a space in the top middle of each one for something to make it more personal. My little forge is too small to be helpful for this project, but I was able to use the plasma cutter, of course. <laughs> you wouldn't need one if you were planning on making your own gates, but if you have a marvelous machine like this one, you'd be silly not to use it, wouldn't you? Especially after I'd figured out how to get it to cut a hole starting from the center of the bar. This is the dry run to make sure it knew the right way to go, or rather to make sure I had asked the computer in the right way to do what I wanted. It's easy to waste expensive material if you mess up the instructions. Well, at least I seem to find it easy. And now with the power on, And it makes round holes too. It's a marvellous machine. These are what will sit over the hanging pins on the posts. But a freehand cutting machine could cut those slots too. Just not as neatly. Or you could drill them out. Something I would have done once upon a time. And the reason I cut those slots out was so that I could do this. Almost like making a traditional mortise and tenon wooden gate. I tacked in some inserts. These ones should stop the verticals bending. In effect, I've made some heavy T-section bar for the uprights, but we'll also need some diagonal bracing to stop the whole thing drooping. So far, it's just tacked together because I'm just about making it up as I go along and it might need changing. Now, because there are two gates, it becomes much more complicated. They have to fit the gap between the posts and also line up with the other one. And the only way to be sure of that is to offer them up while we can still change them. Taking the gate for a walk. They're heavy and they're awkward. As you can see, these gates are another project that have been a while in the making. It looks like it's winter in these clips, but it's only a few weeks ago really. At this stage, it's all still adjustable. I can move the verticals and adjust the diagonals until the two gates look like a matching pair. I suspect though that these gates will only fit these particular posts. Bespoke or what? Back in the workshop hoping the clamps didn't move on the bumpy journey back from the posts. Then I welded up the seams with my stick welder. If Father Christmas is watching, I'd like a MIG welder please this year. I promise I'll be very, very good indeed.
Lots of welding and grinding and grinding and welding. It's noisy and tedious, but I have learned that the cleaner the welding is, the better the galvanizing goes. Only the ends are welded. That left all the places where the bars crossed over each other. Rivets is the traditional way of joining steel when it's in layers like this. I've never used them before, so this was a total experiment. These ones are small enough so they won't need heating. The idea is that you just bash the end till it spreads out like a wedge and then you round it over like a mushroom head. I could order the rivets easily enough on the internet, but not the pocket that protects the roundy head from being flattened. Luckily, Will is a very clever and helpful bloke, and he made me one with his clever and helpful machine. It's brilliant. Thanks, Will. Uh, it's an old like 70s Denford, it was CNC in its old days, but when I got it, it was just ripped to pieces. So I retrofitted it with like modern PC control. I also needed a big square headed hammer. This splays the head and traps the flat bar and a round nose or ball peen hammer for rounding over the edges. So now I just drilled holes everywhere, poked a rivet up through them with the roundy end protected in the pocket that Will made. And then bash them. First with the big square hammer and then with the ball peen hammer. It was actually easier and quicker than I had thought. But imagine that people used to make entire ships using only rivets. The noise must have been incredible. Now, Sandra's business is called Harry Henry, named after one of our horses. She worked with children mostly, helping them with balance and confidence and other skills. So we need to make these gates more appropriate for Harry Henry. And I drew up and cut out a couple of horse-shaped signs to fit in the top of the gates. Then they went off to get galvanized and when they came back they looked like this. Here they are, the gates. The zinc needs a bit of cleaning up and we can't paint them until they have weathered for a few weeks. You'll just have to imagine them a nice dark red colour. I used a couple of horseshoes so there's no mistaking what sort of establishment this will be. The rivets add a little something I think, though I'm not sure how much they'll be noticed really. 
Now, there were a lot of comments on the post-building video about them not being strong enough. No rebar, not enough foundation, that sort of thing. So, I had to make sure they wouldn't fall over now, didn't I? They could be fancier, but I like them. I hope you like them too. But mostly, I hope Sandra likes them. Henry. The gates, eh? These are fantastic, sturdy, hairy Henry gates. They keep you all safe and in. And um, show people where we live. Thank you, Tim. Great stuff.